You two are about to begin very acquainted. Hello, I'm Matthew Via for Gate World, and today we're going to be looking at an age old question that every Stargate fan asks themselves at least once. What if a ghoul old took a wraith as a host? Now, before we get to what would happen, we need to ask, could this happen? Could a ghoul old take a wraith as a host? Well, yes. Yes, I think a ghoul old could take a wraith as a host. And I'm not just saying that because then the video would be over. First though, we need to examine the evidence. The ghoul old are a parasitic race that can take control of a host's body by wrapping itself around the spine. We are told the ghoul old would conquer and take a variety of hosts throughout their history and only settle on humans as the main host race after they found Earth. However, in practice, we only really see two races the ghoul old use as hosts, humans and Unus. But if you will permit me to dip our toes into the non-official canon of Stargate, we see some other examples of host races, such as the Owns, the name of them's fish people race given in the Fantastic Frontiers Stargate Season 1 RPG rulebook released in 2003. The Sekhmet, a race of cat people, first mentioned in the Stargate SG-1 Living Gods Stargate System Lords rulebook released in 2004, and later mentioned in the new RPG book. A very popular fan theory is that Ra took an Asgard as a host. This was confirmed to be true in the Living Gods rulebook. A Nox was made into a host in the 2006 Special Convention comic. And, jumping back to official canon, the animal from the 5th episode of Season 5 of the Tomb, which shows the ghoul old doesn't need the host race to be humanoid. Actually, the funny thing is, while doing research for this video and looking up all this stuff, I found that in the non-official canon, this has already happened. <clears throat> what? This comes from the Fandemonium books, specifically the Stargate SG-1 Apocalypse trilogy, shown in these books here if you're curious. To briefly summarize this trilogy, SG-1 is set a century into the future, right before Jack helped expose the Rogan ID operation in the episode Shades of Grey. Because the operation was never exposed, the Tolan, Asgard, and Tok'ra abandoned Earth, right when Apophis launched an invasion and conquered it. If that wasn't bad enough, the Wraith found Atlantis and managed to use it to get to the Milky Way and now control sizable portions of the galaxy. Now I haven't read this trilogy yet and I'm somewhat relying on what fandom has on the topic. According to the books, the Naquita in the blood of current and former ghoul old hosts is toxic to the Wraith. Which is interesting because all other races who can't be taken as hosts have the opposite reason. And Asgard's body will reject the ghoul old after a short time, though it will cause the host's body to die. Jaffa can't be taken as host because of already caring immature symbiotes. The Nox seem to be able to exist with the symbiote based on the comic, and Erish Box race can't be taken as host due to something about their physiology. With all these races, there's something about their biology that makes them immune or fight back against the ghoul old in their bodies. But with the Wraith, it's about a weakness they have against the Ghoul Ould's biology. Also, that bit about the Nakoda in the blood being toxic to the Wraith? I actually think that's a little brilliant of an idea given how similar it is to the Hoffman drug. But it doesn't come across as a ripoff. It uses a pre-established idea from SG-1 that would naturally make sense with an idea from Atlantis. It's a better explanation than what I assume would be the reason that a Ghoul Ould couldn't take a Wraith as a host which my thought was since Wraith's spine seemed to extend outward from their body, the Ghoul Old couldn't wrap around it. Now, I did say a Ghoul Old could take a Wraith as a host, despite the fact I'm making it sound like they can't. There were experiments to overcome the Nakoda issue and implant a Ghoul Old into a Wraith, which did eventually work, though at first the Ghoul Old and Wraith did have to share the body. Later, a compound was developed that allowed the Ghoul Old to take full control. Getting back to the main question of this video, can a ghoul old take a wraith as a host? Is it even biologically possible? Well, if we go by the unofficial canon, yes. However, I'm not going to take everything said in this trilogy and the other unofficial canon sources as solid word. Even if I like some of the ideas present, at the end of the day, it is non-official canon and could be changed later. 
But even with the most basic information we have on the Gu'uld's biology and history, there appears to be a very high possibility that Gu'uld could take a wraith as a host. Okay, so we have affirmed that it is possible that a Gu'uld could take a wraith as a host. So what would happen? This would depend on what Gu'uld we are talking about and whether or not this was a collective effort by the Gu'uld as a whole. For this video, let's say a single standard Gu'uld managed to get to Pegasus and take control of a wraith. Now what? I think a Gu'uld would integrate pretty easily into a wraith society. See, assuming the Gu'uld made its way into a drone or a standard wraith, it would learn that in wraith society, queens sit at the top of the hierarchy. This Gu'uld would then work to take over the body of a queen, and at that point, the Gu'uld is pretty much set. See, remember what Todd said in Season 5, Episode 8, The Queen? Most wraiths seek to be ruled, they fear being without a queen. If the ghoul old can play the part of a wraith queen, then none of the other wraith might notice. And given how cutthroat wraith society seems to be, a ghoul old would fit right in. Also, to answer the question if the ghoul old could use the abilities of a wraith, the telepathy and feeding, yes. The ghoul old are, at the end of the day, parasites. Part of that entails feeding off the host. So when a wraith would feed, at least some of that energy would go to the symbiote. Given a wraith can seemingly live forever if they have food, I think it is safe to assume the Ghoul Old would be able to take this energy and live off of it as well. For the wraith's telepathy, we do see some Ghoul Old try and create advanced humans to use as hosts to gain access to similar abilities. Nirti comes to mind. And when Baal took over Audria, there was a real concern he would use her powers to break free. We didn't get to see this, but the concern was real. So yeah, if a ghoul old took over a wraith, it would place them in the best position possible, especially if they were in the body of a queen. They would have a host with powerful abilities and an army of loyal followers. The only real danger of a ghoul old getting caught, besides the Tari telling the wraith about them, would ironically be the ghoul old's own megalomaniacal tendencies. As a ghoul old, he will never lose his thirst for power. Now, this may depend on the ghoul old. One like you or Ball may not make this mistake, but I can see the Ghoul World trying to gain more and more territory or control over other hives, which would likely result in the other hives coming together to take down the Ghoul World controlled one, whether or not they knew about the Ghoul World. Another possibility would be that the Ghoul World would start making weird demands, like taking on more Wraith worshippers than normal, requesting statues be made of them, or even taking full control over a human world, which isn't really how the Wraith treat their humans. To them, they're cattle to be eaten not subjects to rule over. If the Gu'uld started doing this, the wraith under the command of the queen might begin to suspect something's up and act against the queen. So to summarize, could a Gu'uld take a wraith as a house? Yes, there's a high possibility. What would they do? The same thing all Gu'uld will do, try and take as much power as possible, which may ultimately lead to the Gu'uld getting caught and killed by the wraith. But what do you all think? Do you think a Gu'uld could take a wraith as a house? Or do you think it's impossible? What do you think a Gould would do with a Wraith as a host? What would you do in that position? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below, leave a like and subscribe, and check out my channel, SG24, for more Stargate content.